All right, let's actually begin our game. Um, so we're going to be launching Click Team Fusion 2.5, um, and then we're going to be saving it as last name underscore positions um, in our working folder, which is just documents. So I'm going to open this up. I already did this from a previous um, screen, so I'm going to actually close this. You may not have that. So yours should look like this. If it doesn't, remember, open up, um, holding down Control and Shift at the same time, and it will open up Click Team blank looking exactly like mine. So I'm going to open up file. I'm going to go to new. Here it is, application two. I'm going to save as, so file, save as, always start there. I'm going to make sure that it's in my documents folder. If it's not, um, you should have, I'll close these up so it looks like yours. If you open up quick access, you should have a documents folder. Always save, save things there. I have a folder inside there called games. So I'm going to call it my last name, spell it correctly. Underscore positions and press save. And when we do that, hey, you can come join and be a guest appearance in my video if you'd like. I should put my mask on. Whoop. Hello, Yay. guest appearance. We are, what's your favorite video game? Favorite video game, Madden. Yeah. Madden. Sure. Any reason, particular why? It's not, um, that was always the best one to play with my buddies. I just enjoyed doing it. We would always do the draft and like draft our team, so it helped us learn the players' names better. Yep. Um, and then I don't know. I just grew up liking sports. I always liked sports video games. So nice. That was my favorite. Do you know the difference between relative and absolute positions? No. <laughs> what about parent-child objects? Um, they involve a parent and a child. That is true. Objects. So, <laughs> students, if you um, um, are in this class, uh, Mr. Vickers' class, then uh, you should teach him about absolute and relative positions. I'm excited for so, that. Yeah, so he's going to quiz you on that. Anyway, we'll get back to this video in just a moment. Oh, doing all kinds of crazy stuff here. All right, let's continue. Uh, Mr. Vickers had to leave. So we're going to open frame one in the frame editor and then um, insert a new active object. So that's important. So insert a new active object and put it anywhere on the frame, and then we're going to rename the object as parent underscore face, and then change it to 30, 300 by 300. So let's come back here, open up frame one, so you could do it by double clicking here on the icon, um, or double clicking here in the thumbnail, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm gonna insert a new object, and it's going to be an active object, which is right here. Um, however, if I just clicked on all objects, I could have typed in, active as well. So let me go ahead and double click on active and put it there. So here it is, and I'm going to call it. Um, so remember down here in the properties where you make all the changes, I'm going to come over here and call it object parent. I think that's what it was. So let me double check what that was. Um, right here. Oh, parent underscore face. So that's what it was parent underscore face. I guess I totally got that wrong. Parent underscore face. And we want it 300 by 300. So as we move through here, uh, remember this is the size and position. So we click on that and make it 300. So the size, um, 300 by 300. There's our active object right there, 300 by 300. Notice how the pixelation uh, makes it so it's kind of blurry and doesn't look great for now. All right, let's come back here to our game. So. We want to change the position also to 320 by 240. Um, question is, is that absolute or relative? Um, it is absolute because that position is um, in reference to the zero, zero. Um, so then this, we're going to change the movement type to eight directions. Um, with this movement type, the arrow keys on the keyboard are used. So you'll notice your arrow keys go up, down, left, right, but then there's also the corners as well. So there's your eight positions. So 320, 420, and then eight directions. So 320 in the X and 420 Y, and I believe that I got that wrong. 320 and 220, there it is. See what happens when I talk, 320. Let's do this right here, 220, there we go. That way it's still on our frame somewhere. And then let's change it to runtime or uh, movement. We're going to change it from static to eight directions, which is right here. Uh, physics eight directions movement. 
So keep that in mind. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. And I do um, encourage you at some point to choose some of these. And um, we're actually, sorry, not physics, this one or your eight directions. I do encourage you to kind of play with some of these and just see what they do. Um, but right now, let's do eight directions. Um, later on, I would maybe try mouse control just so you can see what that look like, looks like. Um, many of you are familiar with that in your games, but let's do eight directions. Okay, so we have everything set up exactly as it should be. And come back here. Now we're going to edit our image, so double click on the parent face object, um, and then apply what you learned, clear the default image, and then using color palette, set the foreground color to a skin tone. So I'm going to choose my object. I'm going to double click on it, which allows me to edit the pixelation. Um, I'm going to actually clear it, so by pressing the clear button, there it is. And then the foreground, remember there's a background color and a foreground color. Background, foreground. We're going to choose the foreground color and choose a skin tone. So as you go through here, um, you can pick one that is whatever skin color you want. I'm going to choose, just because I'm going to be crazy, um, I'm going to choose a light green color, even though it's not really a skin tone. But I'm going to maybe make it a little more pukey green, like somebody who's sick. Let's do that. So I'm going to do that color green. Okay, so that's, that's where I'm at. You can choose whatever color you want. It's just for a background skin tone. Put myself back down here. Bloop. Um, you'll notice that we're going to start creating a little face, but that's okay. We're going to use the ellipse tool just like we did in previous class and then click on the filled button in the options area um, and move the cursor to the top left corner with the drawing canvas and it will display zero, zero, displaying where the cursor is at the exact top left corner of the canvas. So an 8.3, so right up here. You'll notice this is zero, zero. Um, so ellipse tool. And then we're going to choose filled and then move it straight up here. And basically what we're going to be doing is draw an ellipse from 00, zero to 300, 300. So 00 is top, 300, 300 is bottom. Let's come back here. Uh, ellipse tool is this one right here. We're going to make sure that it's filled. So remember there's outline filled, there's filled, and there's outline. We want filled. And so I'm going to move it up here to 00. zero. You'll notice that my X and Y coordinates are here. So zero, zero, I'm gonna get close. Uh, let's see if I can do it. Oh, I had it and then it disappeared. It doesn't have to be exact, just needs to be close. That's close enough. Okay, so I'm gonna drag all the way to 300, 300. Basically, you're just filling up the whole frame. And let go, boom, there we go. So green circle. Now when you're done, um, <clears throat> click on the view hotspot button, which looks like this, and then click on the quick move button shown in 8.4. So 8.4 is the next one. So hotspot is not centered. So here's our hotspot, but let's come back here. So view hotspot area, and then um, click on the quick move button, and this moves the hotspot to the center of the object. So let's come back here. Choose the hotspot button, which is right here. So I click on that and notice how it's all over the place. And so I'm going to do quick move to the center. So there we are, quick move center. Let's come back here. Um, press the OK button and using the ellipse tool, um, sorry, we need to create a few more objects and modify the sprite images using the ellipse tool. Note that this um, color is the white part of the eye. So we're going to be creating some new objects, so these are all individual objects. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. Make sure you name them correctly, just as we name this. So I'm gonna pause the video, and I want you to do make these. Um, these are basically, we did it already with the big circle, but you're gonna make a new object um, in the same way, and make sure you make it white, um, and go through these. So they're not all going to be circles, but just make the objects, they'll be the diamonds. Um, and then after that, we'll go through and create them differently, okay? So go ahead and make those and then come back to the next video to figure out what to do with them.